In this video, we're going to look at the Segway Raster Factory. The Segway Raster Factory is used for importing a Segway file into a raster structure and also inspecting the contents of that file. Segway files are often used for storing geophysical data uh, and particularly seismic reflection data. If you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you're already familiar with Segway files and their structure. Let's launch the Segway Raster Factory processor. And you'll see that there are a number of different methods in here. We're going to explore each of them. The first thing we're going to do is use the content reporter. So what this does is reports all of the information about your Segway file from what's in the binary headers to the obsidic headers, and then some statistics about the trace data in that file. So let's go ahead and pick a Segway file. That's my input file. And where I've been asked for an output file property, I can choose to either specify an output file where the content report will be written, written to as just ASCII text, or if I leave it blank, it will write the information to the process window. So let's do that. And let's make this window bigger. And I can see the content report for that particular Segway file. I have some statistics at the top that relate to the sampling interval in microseconds, the uh, storage format, so this is a four byte float, the number of traces, the maximum amplitude and the minimum amplitude values, and the maximum number of uh, samples in each trace. I can then inspect the binary header. So this is a decode of the binary header. And again, there's um, specific information in there that I might want to look at. And here is the obsidic header. It's not particularly formatted very well. I think if you were to copy this out and maybe put it into something like Notepad, it might look a little bit better. Let's have a go. Yeah, still not, still not great. <laughs> Okay, but it's there nonetheless. And then I have my spatial bounds. So this is reading the coordinates from each of the trace headers and is listing the minimum and maximum bounds of the uh, coordinates in the, in the trace headers. So that tells me something a little bit about my Segway file that may be useful for me to uh, use later on when I'm using some of the other methods in the Segway raster factory. All right, so let's look at the next method. This is import a Segway file as a raster. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the trace information. Each trace will be a separate column in the output raster, and each sample and each trace will be a separate row in the output raster. So if you have uh, data that is um, stacked, that will look like a traditional um, seismic profile. But if your Segway file is structured such that it's 3D data or there are gathers um, uh, in there, then it will write out, write out the file literally in trace sample order. So let's just pick out this file. It's asking me for an output folder. Now, the output folder is used if you want to write out some of the header information to an ASCII text file. So we're going to do that. Let's uh, choose um, to output to this folder. And I'm going to say, yes, I want you to write file header information and I want you to write trace header information for this particular file. I can then choose which <coughs> samples within the uh, Segway file I want to import. If I specify zero to negative one, it's going to take samples from zero right through to the end of the samples in the Segway file, in, in, in the whole Segway file. The same with start trace and end trace. I can choose which trace to start and end the import on. Uh, in this case, zero and negative one specifies to import the entire Segway file.
Okay, so the Segwire file has been placed into the layer listing and I'm going to render it. That looks pretty horrible with the default color palette. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose something that's a little bit more uh, friendly. And um, the best color palettes to use are these diverging color palettes. And let's put some splits in here. So one standard deviation. Okay, and there's my Segwire file rendered in a more traditional seismic color palette. Let's go and just window in on a little bit of information here. Do it again. Okay, there we go. Let's have a look at some of those output files that are also written. If you remember, we told it to write trace header information and file header information. So you'll notice that along with the original Segwire file, I have now a text file. So let's have a look what's in the text file. The text file is literally the uh, content report that we originally generated minus the spatial bounds information. Let's have a look at this CSV file. This CSV file is now the trace header information. So you'll notice that in here are the source X, source Y, group X, group Y coordinates, the water depth, uh, and a series of the other standard information that is written to the uh, trace headers. So each row in here is a separate trace header. This is useful when you want to spatialize the Segwire profile later on because you have the coordinate information in here. The other file it seems to have written is this one here. Let's have a look what's in there. And again, it's the, it's the trace uh, header information. But this time you'll notice that it's from trace 0 to 4114, which is actually the full extent of the data. So there's a little bit of overlap between uh, these two here. Um, so you could probably get rid of this one. So you'll notice here when I move my cursor that it is displaying in the coordinates in trace and sample. So the X values are the trace number, the Y values are the sample number. And that's basically how it's coded the, the information from the original SegY file. So it maps it to X, Y space, assuming that the X values are the traces and the Y values are the samples. It's as simple as that. Let's go back and have a look at some of the other methods in here. So we imported a SegY file as a raster, but I can also import a SegY file as a, a, a series of um, rasters that are tiled. So in this case, it's useful for when I have a really, really long SegWi file and I want to break it into um, separate sections. So I might want trace 0 to 2000 and then 2000 to 4000, 4000 to 8000, etc. So I simply, in this case, the only addition is the traces per tile. And I might use 2000 traces per tile and it's going to create two separate um, rasters for me. Let's just do that quickly and see what it does. In this case, I'm not going to bother uh, setting the, asking it to write the output headers, and I'm going to read the full file, but output separate rasters every 2,000 traces. So you can see Ramp has created a raster for traces 0 to 2,000. I'll just render that. And then again, 2,000 to 4,000. And then a small one from 4,000 to 4,113. <laughs> so um, this is just useful when you want to break your uh, Segway data up into smaller chunks that are more manageable. The other tools in here are similar. So export a Segway file to raster files tiled is exactly the same as the tool that we just used. But instead of returning in-memory rasters into RAMP, it allows you to 
choose an output folder and an output raster format, and it will export those um, files out to that, um, the tiled files out to that folder in the format that you defined. You can also um, batch export. So if I had a folder that was had multiple SegWire files in it that I wanted to process, I can use the batch export um, SegWire files. So this allows me to choose a folder, say to it that I want to look at anything, any file that um, ends .sgy, and then you have pretty much exactly the same options as you had before. All that's going to do is batch import multiple SegWire files to multiple output raster files. And then the last method here is extract run lines. So let's give that a go. What this will do is it will actually take the uh, coordinate information for the traces and export those to a shape file so that you can pull them into ArcGIS, that sort of thing. So let's uh, choose my input folder. Uh, and this allows you to look at multiple SegWire files if you so wish. Um, we've only got one in here. So we'll just say, OK, look at anything that ends with .sgy put it in my output folder. We'll make the output folder the same as the input folder in this case. I'm going to create a shape file called run lines. My reference point is going to be my common depth point. So I can choose whether I want to, um, to use the source group or CDP uh, coordinates that are in the SegWire trace headers. And then it's also asked me for a uh, scalar. Uh, this is used to scale the coordinates that are stored in the um, SegWire uh, files uh, in the trace headers. Um, by default, the SegWire reader is going to um, apply the correct uh, scaling uh, that's defined in the SegWire header to the coordinates in the trace header. But there are some SegWire formats that apply other types of uh, scaling. And, and this gives you the opportunity to, um, to apply a custom scaling to those values. So we'll just leave it at one. Let's have a go. And it's done. Let's go have a look at that uh, shapefile. So here I am in QGIS or QGIS, and I'm going to add a vector layer and choose that shapefile that we just created called runlines.shp. And there's my run line. Pretty boring, but it is the CDP run line for that particular SegWire file. Obviously, if I had a whole folder of files, this is creating an index of that information. If I click on, on it, you'll see the typical information that it's stored in there. So it's actually got the file name that it came from, which is really useful um, if you've got, like I said, multiple files and you click on a particular line and you want to know which SegWire file you need to look at for the seismic profile information for that line, for example. The other thing we're going to do is add the actual traces in here. So we created that ASCII CSV file that had the trace headers, and now we're going to spatialize that. So I'm going to add a delimited text layer here in QGIS. I'm going to pick my input file. If you remember, that was the CSV file that was generated in the original import routine. I'm going to tell it it's CSV. The first record is the field names. It's already said, OK, well, source X and source Y must be what you're looking for. So we'll click Add. And you'll notice now that it has added a point data set that represents the individual um, trace headers. Now, the reason this is offset is because we imported source points and this is the CDP. Um, but I'm going to click on this one and you can see all of the information that I have is in, all of the trace header information is in is in here. So again, it's, it's really useful, particularly if you're trying to get to a specific uh, trace. So I might be looking at, uh, I am going to uh, field record 68440, and I can head straight to that in my um, seismic profile and, and understand the spatial relationship 
of the seismic profile uh, to a real world coordinate system. So that's the Segway Raster Factory in a nutshell. I hope you found this video useful.